up in your homes, Jared Laxer. Tonight, on our great out play out last, it might be snowing outside, but things are heating up in here. At the end of the show last week, the remaining the remaining 12 contestants were told to break into three groups of four. There are only four remaining from the original blue tribe, and they banded together immediately, forcing the remaining red to divide amongst themselves. Oh. Tonight, they're going to face off in a late night talk show challenge. There will be one winner, two tribes to go tri tribal council. You choose the winners, they vote each other out. 12 are left, who have you voted out today? videos there's just one thing I want to address with the audience real quick uh, most of the show our contestants if they are not on stage they are asked to be out of the room so they don't see information that happens in the room or on stage I just want to remind everybody to please keep what you see in here to yourselves and not to the contestants for the integrity of the game uh, and for that uh, thank you and let's enjoy the show yeah. Four weeks ago, the blue team was sent to tribal by the audience for a challenge they didn't win. Despite losing the others, four promptly escaped being voted off. Today, back on the same tribe, they fight for their survival. If you have a show, if no one else will do it, maybe you can hire the D team. faces so things are heating up things are getting spicy I have stopped showering we now know that the original red team who only ever spent one week together has an alliance against the original blue team who only ever spent one week together <laughs> I've hardly the time but that's and I know okay I said like I'll step in if I need to be a messy bitch like I do recall saying that at some point but I gotta I gotta admit, I don't know how to do that. Like when I'm playing Scrabble, I'm just, I'm just trying to think of words that I like. I and then someone's like, "Oh, I've been saving this cue," and I'm like, "You're allowed to do that." Like I, but I would really like to learn how to be like, "Hey, like, pfft, don't vote me out. Pfft, pass it on." I guess that's a good start. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows at all. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows but Jared Laxer. Nor normally that would be nobody knows but Jesus. But because we're playing out without play out laugh, I said. Nobody knows but Jared Laxer. He's he's the host of the the show we're playing, and boy has he seen my troubles. Been tough go for the the blue people, but we're fighting hard and we're having a lot of fun playing. And I hope hope you're enjoying watching us, cause we're not we're not gonna stop and until until the lights come down. Enjoy enjoy it tonight, everybody. So there are only four of us left from the original blue tribe. And we're all in the same tribe this week. And we're all friends. So that means that if we lose today, I'm going to have to decide which one of my friends to stab in the back. How do you decide that? Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because a vision softly creeping left its seeds while I was sleeping and the vision that was planted in my brain still remains within the sound of silence in rest
Christmas dreams. Well, we're back at it again. Hey, Toronto, fan favorite game changer Chris George here. But I've been thinking, is it enough to be fan favorite game changer Chris George? Should I not have a moniker like the truest legends of Survivor history? The Dragon Slayer, the Specialist, and Chicken from Survivor China. What would be my name then, if not fan favorite game changer Chris George? Although it doth run trippingly off the tongue, perhaps the gardener. For I've been planting my seed in every single player thus far. And now the information trees are starting to bloom. Or maybe the beekeeper. Because you know I always know what's the buzz. Or maybe just the sand daddy. Because as cracks form in alliances, the sand daddy will be there. The sand daddy will be in every crack. You can't get rid of the sand daddy. And you can't get rid of fan favorite game changer Chris George. So I feel like I got three votes last week because I didn't make the, the blue group that joined our team feel welcome. It's not an issue this week, but I, I, I baked cookies to bring to people. I, I hope I can help develop those relationships. But otherwise, I'm, I'm a pretty chill guy. Um, I don't think I have anything to be worried about this week. Um, we, should, we should be totally fine uh, for this game. Uh, I don't think anyone has anything to worry about with me. I'm a very balanced individual, and I think we're going to have a really fun time this week. I'm in a bathroom at a Denny's. Doesn't matter why. Listen, I know about improv, and I feel like I thought I was doing some good last week. I thought. Here's this challenge that we're supposed to do, and I thought I got a great way of presenting it, uh, like following all the rules of the challenge, but just presenting it in a way that would be pretty cool. And I got some flack for it. So, all I'm saying, not cool. So thanks to everybody who supported our improv choice. Also what I'm saying right now is, smells like weird soap in here. Look. I had a plan last week. It didn't go as I wanted to. Now I have to find another way to make sure that Cal doesn't get another fucking idol. Hey everybody, me, Dakota here. Um, I haven't done one of these forever, and that's because I've been super busy lately. Um, I couldn't find my dog the other day. Superhero, Where's Mr. Better. Bean? Yeah. We don't know where Mr. Bean is. Oh. My partner and I found a tandem bicycle. And I practiced with my band. Things have been a little bit busy, but um, super laser focused on the competition. Red team's gonna take the cake again this week. I feel like we're dominating. I love my teammates. I love the other teammates too. It's gonna suck sending them to the tribal council, but what are you gonna do? That's showbiz, baby. Hi, it's Isabel. We're going into week four of this Survivor Madness. I'm green team, which is very exciting because I get to wear a green outfit. And now the teams are getting smaller and smaller. There's less people to backstab, which is a little stressful. Everyone's got to watch their back, and it's hard to know who to trust. Laugh, it is me, your boy. Oh, oh. no, I think that's Jilly's thing, but hi, hello. See this dog? Wow. Don't you love him? Don't you just see this dog and go, wow, what a nice, what a nice creature. Oh, look at that. Wow, what a sweetie. And here's the stakes, okay? The winter season's coming up. This dog suffers from dog tuberculosis. It's a very serious. It's so serious. Anyone, you know, we've all seen A Christmas Carol. You know what happens when winter season rolls around. His crutches are not pictured, but they are in the picture, if you know what I mean. Tiny Tim over here. As well as my four British orphan children. 
also not pictured, but there's some stakes. You know, we're splitting the teams into three. Could be anyone's game at this point if it wasn't already. And there you go. He's left. He can't deal with the sadness. And neither can I unless I make it through this week on the show. So please, donate to your local charity. All right, going into episode four. So I uh, smashed my face and gashed my, gashed my head open. Um, so I'm going to spill some goddamn confessions right now. This is going to be a juicy motherfucking confessional coming at you. One, secret alliances since like episode two and um, current ultra secret alliance with one other player to try to make it to the final two, backstabbing a plenty. Um, I feel like uh, I took who I thought was the strongest player and convinced them to ally with me to make it all the way to the end. So we're gonna be coming at you hard. To win this game, you have to know everything. Who knows everything? Who has all that access? Jared Laxer. I just need to hack the system. Standard footprint will give me what I need. Use a proxy rat, FUD that up, break the firewall, apply a simple keylogger, gain terminal access to practically every message board on the planet. Hone in on Jared, essentially I will become Jared Laxer. for you guys. Uh, each person, each tribe uh, designated one person to host. Everyone else will be doing whatever roles they came up with on their own. Uh, and this is how it's going to work. So there's only going to be one winner. Uh, and we want to spread the tribal councils out. And uh, we want to give a fair shot to everybody. The way it's going to work is the tribe that goes first will go first. It will be the green tribe. Okay? Then the blue tribe will go. Then we'll ask you who you like better, the green tribe or the blue tribe. The loser will go to tribal council right away. After that, the red tribe will go last, and we'll put the red tribe up against the winner of the first two, and the loser of that will go to the second tribal council. Everyone understand how that works? Yeah. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, it's just a comedy show up front, and the rest of it's super tense. So. <laughs> You guys feel good? Everyone feels good on stage about what they're gonna do? <laughs> Absolutely not. And Chris, how about you, Mike? You feel good? Yeah! All right, right. Especially after what you just said. All right, well, right. <laughs> Green, you're up first. Everyone else, you can go hang out. I'll go to this side. Here we go. 
go. I did that check. Oh, you wanted to check? Yeah, it's a shoot. Table. We use that table? No. no. What? Nah. Okay. Let's <laughs> accept that. We're not ready. All right. All right, everybody. Five minutes to showtime. It's five minutes to showtime. Everybody, places, please. Uh, James, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah. All right. Uh, look, I know your dad owns a network and everything, but we have you know, sensors we gotta deal with and everything, and they didn't like last week's show. You're not my dad. Tell me what No, I'm not your dad. No, but I really, like I produce, my name's Cal. Been doing this for 10 years, trust me. Dan, love it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just, we can't do what happened last week. It's from last week, last week was... <laughs> no, 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 no. You asked Greta Thunberg when she was turning 18 so you could drill a new pipeline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Satire? <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So anyway, Kirsten Stewart canceled. Uh -huh. She's out. Oh, so God. we got a new guest coming in. Hold on. Uh, we're in the scramble. We replaced her with. Go for it. All right. Uh, we replaced her with an experimental noise performance artist from some backwater country in Europe. Bye. Apparently, she's hard to wrangle. Bye. Well, you're good. You're good, James. Bye. Bye. All right, I'm Cal. Okay. No, I don't want to ship. Thanks. Sick All right. I'm good. I, we're going in five. Oh. Not, oh. Okay. Jeez. All right. Ready? Five. We're going live in five, four, three. Everybody give it up who's the news desk jokes, okay? Oh! The University of San Antonio has discovered the newest fetish and it's super gross. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Warthogs, the most racist animal question mark? A new study suggests maybe more on this at six. Uh, people with glasses are no longer people, your TVs with arms. <laughs> Sex doll brothel opened its doors in Mississauga. There is no news story here. I'm just excited. <laughs> Rats in Spain love the rain. Classic. Uh, another new Don Cherry was recently fun. Oh, this has the N word, I think. <laughs> this one also has the N word. N word. N word. <laughs> World record for longest blink won by Claire of Idaho. She's never been had sex. <laughs> In hockey news, Don Cherry is racist. Dot dot dot. Not really news. Hey, who's excited? Who likes who likes hockey? Yeah. yeah. We've got some climate change action these days. Private prisons in the U.S. are contributing over 35% of the average like climate footprint carbon-wise in North America every year. Give it up for the climate! <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Uh, in a new story, if you drink beers, 15 of them, everything you say is correct. <laughs> Monkeys in Asia are suffering from mild dyslexia. Oh, that's a curveball for y'all. Not a single one of you enjoyed that. I like that. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna get we're gonna get to our first guest today. We have a wonderful lady. Uh, she was born in an unmarked grave in the middle of a pig field in what is now former Yugoslavia. Uh, she's a noise musician, an experimental noise musician, and oh boy, you can get this. You can get a new album, Undisclosed Screechings, Roman numeral M C L I I I V, as a title exclusive. Give it up for Blurk. Love that. Would you like a chip? I'd love a chip. Would you like a jelly bean? I would. Ah, whoa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go 
Rồi mình mày vào. À. Đi vào rồi. Đó. That would hit me right in the larynx. I love you. This is just 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 rowdy. Did you guys just pick it up to the interview. We need to get to the interview. Oh, thank you. Interview to the press. Welcome, welcome Blur. So, yeah, hello, hello. Please take a seat at the chair. All right. Um, so it's true. It's true that you were born in an unmarked grave. That's true. In my okay. country, with tradition, for everyone to be born in a grave, so we know we are reminded of the dark specter of death, which mm -hmm. hangs over the peasant. Can you stop hitting me with shit? Oh. <laughs> and because there are in my country there are no doctors, only vengeful witches. Oh. So the incidence of mortality rate is very high. Mortality rate, give it up for the <laughs> Strange, strange that people endorse that in today's economy. That's not understandable. So, you said dark specter? I did. The ghost of the baby that is in the ground grinds up, and this is how we get the beans. Beans! <laughs> beans! Woo! It's very sad. It's very sad. I got one in his armpit, but he didn't acknowledge it. Open, open! Uh, We're doing a professional uh, show! <laughs> Okay. So tell us about your new record. I've heard you're a big fan of experimental recording techniques such as just like just diving in on the intermuscular academy and not leaving the studio. Everyone. And just choking a hand with a piano wire. Every sound, every sound <laughs> is music. The beans, the jelly bean sound is music. Mm -hmm. What is the most fun sound that you can make? Um, probably like <laughs> I love it. I put it on my album. Oh, do it again. We'll do it together. Yeah. One, two, two three. three. Back soon. Mm -hmm. You gotta keep it together, man. Well, you gotta keep it together, huh? No, I don't. You have to keep. You said fuck. You, said fuck you. you, you can't say fuck. It was on the teleprompter. <laughs> it was not on the teleprompter. <laughs> it was totally not on the teleprompter. You can't do it, dude. I just need you to calm down. Just do the interviews. Go ahead. No, I don't want to hit. <laughs> I just need you to look straight and be normal. Mm. No fucks. Well, so okay? you can say the N-word on TV. I, uh, I should have taken that job at Fox News. Well, okay, Connie, I'm sorry, Connie. We're back in three, two, one. I know, I know. I say when we're oh, fuck, we're back. Okay, five, four. And you're back. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our next guest is a man whom you know and I'm sure you love. He's a thug you're familiar with. He arrived with G-Unit in the early 2000s, and he recently had a hysterectomy. Give it up for MC Throat Punch! Okay, girls, you need to call me back. This is like the idiot message I left you. How are you good? Yeah. That's good? Yeah. Please, MC, welcome to the show, MC Throat Punch. How have you been doing lately? Tell us more about your, uh, your service. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what's up with this girl, man? What's the magic trick? Who was gonna sit and watch Grey's Anatomy with me now? I I would. I give you I give you a little kiss on the forehead and say you're a good son. <laughs> I just swear to God, man. She don't know what she's doing. Oh, that's rough. You know, sometimes love it. We go for a walk. Nice. She put her hand in my back pocket. Pocket. <laughs> and I put my hand in her back pocket. Dude, don't, don't, don't hog the blunt, dude. And we would have our hands in each other's back pockets and shit. You ever feel that before? God, I miss her! I've never had sex. <laughs> <laughs> you have an Eskimo kiss, motherfucker? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> 
ain't gonna do my regular shit tonight. I know I said I was gonna perform a song off my new album. I'm gonna murder your family. But I'm gonna spit you some real shit off the dome tonight. Does that look like a skin tag to you? <laughs> Well, that's rough. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Is that what inspires your music? Is that what brings you to share within your heart the love that dominates your, your Oprah? Sit here and cry and stuff, gee. Who's gonna, who's gonna be my big spoon now, huh? I, my kingdom for a jetpack, honestly. You know, just in a world where someone loved me. Hey, uh, shut the fuck up, man! What are you doing? All right, cut! Fucking cut! What? Cut! What? Commercial! What? Commercial! What? We're just going to the music. Going to the... We just gotta do the fucking music. Yeah, man. oh, we're going to music. Good. Yeah, we're just gonna do the music. Okay, sing a song with me. It goes like, what? I'm not two, singing three. a You're song. You're fired! You are without a job. <laughs> <laughs> You're firing me. You are without a job. <laughs> Dental benefits, you get it again. Fuck you, James! You can't say that on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this whole place! I'm sorry, Connie, it's been good working with you. This is bullshit. Oh, punch. Oh, There's something about this. Oh, boy. Okay, we're gonna get to the musical segment, everybody. It's gonna be a very fun time for the whole thing. Uh, you ready? You ready? He's ready to go in, ladies and gentlemen. Who else sees Go in on the microphone! Of the AV Club are here, and uh, 
neighbor lady. I don't know your name. It's Ambrosia. Lovely. I'm not sure how you found out about this. It but means but... nectar of the gods. <laughs> very nice, very nice. All right, well, we've got an exciting... It's also an apple. <laughs> we've got an exciting show for you tonight. We've got a real hustler on the Toronto entertainment scene. And we've also got the hunkiest teacher at Highmore High, my math teacher, is coming here tonight. So, very <laughs> Kevin, it's not just an exciting night here in the studio, no. It's been an exciting week in the world of news. Uh, big news. <laughs> <laughs> A South Carolina man found himself unexpectedly under the influence when he found three bags of marijuana in his McDonald's iced tea. <laughs> Authorities suspect that the man inadvertently ordered the marijuana when he asked for extra lemon in his drink. So McDonald's responded saying that if people would like extra lemon, they need only ask for a quarter of that dank, dowel, dinky, doom, sticky, icky, bobo bush. <laughs> talk, talk about a happy meal. <laughs> Instagrammers were delighted to learn of a dog who was taught how to talk using a series of buttons leaving men everywhere horrified about what those dogs might reveal to their girlfriends. <laughs> Peanut butter, ball, 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 bad, lick. I don't, know what, I don't know what that means, but I hope we get a dog for Christmas. <laughs> Rap artist T.I. has been criticized about forcing his daughter into yearly hymen checkups. T.I. better watch out. The last time a man was this sexually obsessed with his own daughter, he was elected president. Oh. Oh. <laughs> a glitch in a cell phone server released thousands of romantic Valentine's Day messages months after the fact. So, Jason, if you never got my message, I think you got a cute little butt. Mm. <laughs> a butt to where poo comes from. <laughs> Sun recently reported that the cost of housing is on the rise. In other news, Hitler bad. <laughs> is, that, is the Toronto Sun different than the outer space sun? Hot off the press. <laughs> from his station at Hockey Night in Canada, leaving thousands of Canadians saying they've chosen to boycott the show, the same way that we all stopped listening to Thriller at Halloween. We don't. Uh, we don't. <laughs> Still listen to it. And, <laughs> and finally, a Louisiana woman has been charged with selling fake doctor's notes to students who want to get out of class. The woman was charging $20, and I'd like to remind my classmates that I'll do it for $15. <laughs> $10 if you sit with me at lunch. Hi-o! <laughs> and I just want to tell you, I went to the doctor yesterday, all healthy! Give it up for my baby brother, Kevin, everyone! I heard you had a real interesting experience in gym class today. You want to tell us about that? You could call it interesting. I call it a hole in one. Fascinating. <laughs> tell me more. Well, we were climbing the ropes in gym class, and David whipped his pants. Oh. <laughs> Poor David. Well, the show. Well, you might think it was a little one, but it was a big one. Everyone could see his butt. It was hilarious. And Claire was like, "Hey, who let one whip?" And then, and then I was like, "Hey, David, who let one whip?" Okay. Because <laughs> it, it was a, a whip in his pants. But <laughs> I think it's gonna be tough to come back from this one. Probably won't be invited to too many parties. Just because he ripped his pants? Hey, you don't want to be the guy to party who let one whip. <laughs> oh, sorry. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Oh, sorry. Oh, Jenny, you got your braces no. off looking good. Sorry, no. Mom. I know, I know, I'm not here. You look so cute, Kevin. How's it going, sweetheart? I know, I'm not here. I'm not here. <laughs> I needed the basement. I know, I know, but how's it going? It's going great. Are you going to submit this to YouTube? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> do, you need, do you need anything? Do you no. want to guess? I could be 
I guess. You're so busy. Why don't you get back to doing whatever you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, okay. Just, sweetheart, just that. No. Mom! No! Okay, okay, I'm not very brave. <laughs> Tonight. He's the hardest working man in Toronto show business. Welcome, Hark Malworth. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. We've got a real tromboner over here, huh? <laughs> much for having me. I mean, you have a show, I'll be there. <laughs> I know you're all about that hustle. Oh, I'm like that movie, Hustle and Flow, except I'm all hustle. You know, except when I go to the bathroom, then I'm all flow. You know? <laughs> Why are you even here? Aren't you like 40? <laughs> you gotta get yourself out there if you want to be seen, you know? Show business, am I right? Wow. Seen by who, my mother? <laughs> And you have an exciting sketch project oh, coming up. Yeah, well, I've been working with my troupe, The Horse of Enemies, and I gotta say, man, we hope we have a show about the Are you okay? Kevin, stick to the script, I gotta go pee-pee. Okay. I drained my juice box too fast, and now I gotta go pee-pee. All right, let's go. Oh, my commercial. Phone. We'll just take a little commercial break. A word from our sponsors. <laughs> Here. <laughs> you excited for Christmas or? Well, they don't really talk during commercial. Alright, well, fuck me then. Too. <laughs> Did you wash your hands? Give me my tom bar. And we're back. It's so hard, exciting sketch on the Yeah, way. yeah, yeah. We're working. Sorry to interrupt, but did anyone need a snack? <laughs> Mary. Well, I prefer Johnson, if you know what I mean. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding now, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Wow. Do you have any, do you have any brews, too? Oh, we might have a couple in the fridge. Oh, okay. Is this your show now? Are you just trying to be nice to your friends, sweetheart. They're not my friends. He's my very professional guest. Yeah, and if they were, it would be illegal. <laughs> Why'd you respond to my Facebook ad? Hey, if there's a show, I'll do it. I want to eat tonight. <laughs> it's a grim reminder of the Canadian comedy scene. <laughs> Crispy! Oh, oh, yeah! Crispy! Hey. Right over here. That sounds there great. You oh. Hard, there's oh. Okay. oh, Mrs. J, you're the best. I oh. told you, call me Mary. Oh, Mary, you're the best. Oh, wow, you guys got a great mom here. All right, that is <laughs> Haircuts I wanted to get. <laughs> Sweetie, that sounds funny. You get haircuts too. You know, those darn broadcasters, we gotta stick to schedule. Oh, no, all right, well, well, I got hard. thanks for having me. <laughs> 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 yeah, you can just. Yeah. All right, no, they, no. Do, they do have gluten in them. Bye, we want to have gluten in I look. You wanna take that and pass it around? <laughs> Okay, but I'm just trying to help you with your friends. That's so awful for you. You know what? I am a person, young lady, and it might help if you treated me as such. I've got a lot going on, which you would know if you maybe had me as a guest on your show. <laughs> to bring out our next guest. World guest! Yeah! Bring out guest! Yeah! That's my son! Hi. Hi. I'm, I'm a son. So, as I said, he's the hunkiest teacher at Highmore High, Mr. Watson, but you can call him Rob. Oh, sweetheart, he canceled. He called and canceled. What? He said something about setting boundaries and <laughs> inappropriate to come to a student's home, but, but I can fill in. Uh -huh. Welcome, my mom. Thank you, my mom. Thank you, sweetheart. Sorry, I should call you sweetheart. 
do, do you go by Jessica or do you have a stage name on that crazy okay, drag yeah. show? They have the funniest <laughs> name. And they're a little dirty sometimes. The introductions at the beginning. So, okay. oh, uh, Mom, you work in finance. Is that at all interesting? Um, uh, not, not really, sweetheart, to be honest. I, I'd rather talk about my exciting side project. Oh, yeah, you got those macrame owls. How's that going? Oh, I finished it, sweetheart. You'll get it when I die. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided. I'm going to start teaching Zumba. Oh boy. Would you want to do a Zumba lesson right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let mom do a Zumba. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, let your mom do a Zumba. I gave the track. <laughs> um, AB Kid, you can hit that track now. Come on, you can hear it. All right, everybody, everybody up. Everybody up if you want to do some Zumba. All right. Woo. Oh, okay, let's get ready. It's going to be a little bit of like a Hispanic y thing. I don't hear it. Do you <laughs> hear it? Nice there. Let's <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, oh, oh. 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 information that shouldn't have been leaked, leaked and that kind of stuff. Oh shit! So there is a, a, an unknown to this point penalty that will be brought against Cal at some point. <gasps> oh. I'm a big cheater! No one Yeah, because they know. So, sure. oh. <laughs> James, <laughs> just not knowing what that's going to be, just, how do you navigate that? I don't. <laughs> how about you, Cal? Are you are you scared of what's about to happen? Or are you? Why wouldn't I be? I'm put in a position where I don't know how I'm going to get penalized yet. And we have to make a really hard decision. Well, let's talk about that decision. What, what's been going into that, Isabel? I'm just happy that we get the opportunity to say penalize somebody. <laughs> <laughs> right. What are you going to base your vote on at this travel council? Um, the treachery? <laughs> Does that make you worried, Cal? They need to be treacherous towards you? Well, I mean, I think this week for me, this is a comedy god's decision. As much as I thought I had eggs in place, you know? Uh, who knows this week? Why didn't you sit on the chair? 
comfortable. Don't I look comfortable? No. <laughs> With that, it's time to vote. James, you're up first. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, That's a king. fucking awesome Cal is in this show because you know you guys can, you guys saw what he brought to the confessionals each week and they were I mean <laughs> no one put more time and effort in than he did and hey. like I mean hey uh, <laughs> no, my point is my point is Cal came to every show the first season and and afterwards he's like all right I'll do it as if like as if it was even a, a question you knew how much he loves it and it honestly is an honor. Like, it, it, it means a lot how much you love the show, oh, and it gave me confidence and us confidence that it was good and to keep going with it. So we were super happy you could be part of the season. So with that, final words, Cal. Oh, I'm uh, very sad I didn't make it as far as Kyle. 
That's an inside joke for people from last season. Uh, I had a great time. Uh, this is a really cool thing for comics to do who aren't used to doing things outside of what they do. I'm a stand-up. I don't do sketch. I don't do improv. So it was super fun to do that. And uh, if you're a comic out there, try it out. It, it makes you uh, stronger. So uh, thank you for doing Thanks. this. Go hang out. Can I say a thing first? Sure. This week fucking sucked, Jared. Yeah! <laughs> you broke my heart, you son of a bitch. I like everyone on this team. This was yeah. shit. This is, a, this is the hardest vote so, so far. So mad. Sure. Yeah. yeah, well, uh, <laughs> you better. I mean, I think that's what makes the show what the show is, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm okay for now. Eat the cake. Eat the cake. Eat the cake. Yeah. Oh, get a biscuit there. Give it up for Jim Walker, your host, Jeff Walker, for the ball. I can't say anything now. Please give it up for the Red Drive. <laughs> about the latest budget left to him by the previous Liberal government. The Auditor General had to remind Mr. Ford that it's not the size of the deficit that matters, it's how you use it to fuck over the people of Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> Sexual use of emojis have been banned from Instagram and Facebook, to which every Instagram and Facebook user responded, eggplant donut, peach peach, eggplant splattering droplets. <laughs> This week, Amazon is facing backlash for producing a children's t-shirt with the logo Daddy's Little Slut. <laughs> That's true. What? It has since been rescinded, and it has been replaced with a new t-shirt that says, God fucking hell, my parents are unfit to raise me. <laughs> Former famous Toronto rapper and wannabe Toronto raptor, Drake has recently partnered with a cannabis company, cannabis company entitled Canopy Gro Growth Core. Uh, due to his addition as a partnership, the, co the company has, has needed to rethink its customer service policies and making sure that 15-year-old girls get priority. <laughs> <laughs> In the U.S. news, impeachment proceedings continue for former host of The Apprentice, Donald Trump, <laughs> who has recently changed his address from Manhattan to Palm Beach, Florida. The famed Cheetos impersonator presumably felt more comfortable along the retired and dying, just like his policies. <laughs> Known sex offender and zero-time Emmy Award winner Donald Trump has, uh, was last seen at the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company enjoying a nice meal of calamari, sushi, and pheasant. Or as he put it, shrimp row crow. Squid row crow. <laughs> Rapper T.I. has been in the news recently. Seems like he's popping up everywhere. We've got one, too. Uh, he, he is known for taking his 17-year-old daughter to the gynecologist every year after her birthday to make sure she's still a virgin. His album, Toxic Masculinity, drops... Uh, oh, wait, nope, this just in. 
Oh, I'm getting word that rapper T.I. has just been arrested for the murder of his daughter's bicycle. <laughs> I get it. And finally, Discovery Channel has unveiled its newest competition series, Man vs. Bear. Contestants will compete for a grand prize against three grizzlies. Bart, the strongest bear, Honey Bump, the fastest bear, and Tank, the greatest eater of porridge. <laughs> Thank you very much. We got a big show lined up for you in-house band, Nick and the Boys! Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, where's the rest of the band, Nick? I'm difficult to work with. <laughs> but he's got that smooth sound, so... Top quality banter. Uh, our next host... Sherry left me last night. <laughs> uh, our next guest is... A... She took the kids with her. Uh, that's too much information, Nick. <laughs> okay. You never have time to stop before the show. No, that's, that's not true. I, I, my condo is in foreclosure. <laughs> this seems like an after work conversation. So I'm just you always say we're going to go for beers and then you never do. Nick, stop. Stop. <laughs> Our next guest is special correspondent taking us to the weather. Here's Don Cherry live in the streets of Toronto. <laughs> which is weather. <laughs> Speaking of weather, uh, out there it's snowing, but if you think that's a lot of snow, you should see some of those top NHLers' noses, am I right? Run! <laughs> that's a party you want to be invited to every night of the week. There's so much ice out there, you think you're at a Turner Park birthday party. Oh, man, the weather. <laughs> you know what, I actually just got to get something off my chest here. Ever since I've been fired, I mean, let go, I mean, retired, I just, it feels like I've already been forgotten. Just four minutes ago, some kid came up to me and asked me if I'm the colonel from KFC. <laughs> no respect. Millennials have no respect. I'm speaking of people who have no respect. You people who... <laughs> Thanks to Don Cherry. Uh, my next guest is someone we are very lucky to have here with us, especially since it is Remembrance Day. Please give it up for a special one-of-a-kind fella and World War ghost, Private Charles Murphy! <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> well, all right, Chuck. How's everything been doing for you? Well, I'm dead. Uh, yes? Oh, but aside from that, things are pretty good, I would say. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's an interesting take. Why do you feel that way? Well, I don't want to brag, but... Uh... Oh, no, please. That's what literally anyone comes on a talk show to do. <laughs> 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 good because I was in the war to end all war. You're welcome. <laughs> How is everybody enjoying peace? <laughs> uh, you, you are talking, in fact, about the First World War. Is that right, Chuck? First World War, last World War. I really don't see the point of actually naming it or quantifying it. I've been here and some people have been Gosh. calling it the Great War. But to be honest, there was nothing great about it. <laughs> Except some of those dames on the real lines, if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, French women. <laughs> well, uh, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about what life was like back before the war? I, I know I'm interested to hear. Sure, okay. Now, I uh, was raised in Kitchener, Ontario, and I was just a paper boy when the war began. 
Now, I went down to the recruitment office with all of my chums, and we signed up to go to war. I was only 15 years old, but I told the recruitment officer I was 47, and he didn't bat an eye. Well, you old bugger. They needed anybody. Anybody yeah. whatsoever, yeah. yeah. They took a lot of people. <laughs> True. Yeah. Many people died. Yeah. Myself included. Ooh. <laughs> now, they shipped us off. Good, it's okay, I'll wait for that laugh. I'll take it wherever I can get. I'm wearing a very heavy helmet. Okay. <laughs> now, they shipped us out to board in Ontario where we trained up and got all ready and then sent us over to France in the summer of 1916. And as soon as I got there, I was promptly blown to smithereens by an artillery shell. Wow. Hey! That's, uh, that's, duty. <laughs> that's quite a life. Well, it was short. <laughs> uh, and I believe I'm a little worried about this, but I believe that we have a clip. Is that true? Yes, yes, yes. We, uh, there was a man walking around with a film machine in the heat of the action. Uh, and we, uh, we I guess, it. yeah, okay, we'll, we'll run the clip. I cope. something about it, you know? Yeah, now, uh, Chuck, I do have some bad news for you, unfortunately. You, there was a second world war. <laughs> you can't, you can't! No. <laughs> you can't joke, it's a, it's a Josh, it's no. a joke you're making. Uh, no, I'm afraid it, it happened. It, over 85 million people died, and uh, that's five times your war, actually. My war was the Great War! Well, and uh, that's, uh, that's not even a half of it. Then we had the Korean War, and then wars in Iran, Indonesia, the Indochina Wars, uh, the Indochina Wars, uh, then there was the Greek Civil War, and we're just talking about the 1940s and 50s here. No, that's not fair! I'm... Why did I go... Why did I die in a war to end all wars no. if there were just gonna be a fuck ton more wars? <laughs> sacrifices of our military. Ooh, we sell poppies at the grocery store and, and everyone just walks on by and pretends they don't see anybody. <laughs> uh, and, and we have a day set aside especially to remember. Okay. Well, kind of. Half a day. Oh, okay, we, we take one minute out of our day and be in silence and then we just go on with work. Actually, it's incredible we're still talking about it at almost 11 o'clock at night. It's true. <laughs> Well, that's, uh, it's all good, great. Chuckles. It's hard. It's, it's all good. good. It's all good. You fought for your country. Yes, I did. Okay. Now you get to fight for the title of karaoke champion. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It's karaoke time. <laughs> 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 now you all know how this works. Uh, Chuck and I are gonna face off to see who becomes the karaoke champion of comedy program. Now, Chuck, I know you aren't familiar with many of our songs, but don't worry, we've thrown in some that you should be familiar with. Okay. Uh, Red Tribe, welcome to Tribal Council. That's my fan. Uh, I can take it back. 
Alright, I'll hand you the fanny pack. Thank you. Uh, that was a very well produced, thought out, uh, structured everything. How does it feel to put in that much work? Clearly you put in a ton of work on this and still be here at Tribal Council 3. Well, clearly the trombone is a funnier <laughs> Shot at you, what Bree just said. No, I, I agree. Uh, it, it's just a question of funny bad instrument between funny good instrument. I, I think I really, I really played the shit out of that trumpet uh, and really put my body into it. So, uh, Dakota, what are you going to base your vote on at this tribal council? I don't know. Really, just. I, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna, what do you do to me, dude? Oh my god. Um, this is part of the game. Um, I'm gonna, uh, you know what? Uh, we all go out there and we give it a hundred, we go out there and give it a hundred ten percent. I guess it just comes down to who didn't play the game the hardest. Chris, Defensive. who didn't play the game the hardest? Uh, see, that's a, I'd say, I'd say, out of our tribe, I don't believe anybody here deserves to go home. For, for me, this, this vote is heartbreaking yeah. because I care about all these people dearly and if I had my way, this would be, I think, a, a great final four. So it, it's, it's really, I, yeah, it's, it, it's really hard. Well, unfortunately, you guys won't be the final four because one of you is about to go home. <laughs> lines on TV, they're not as harsh. Uh, <laughs> I was feeling so good. Yeah. <laughs> With that, it is time to vote. Bree, you're up first. Holy 
And it was evident why. Being in that box and, and, and uh, <laughs> being able to drop the right things at the right time, like that in itself was so hard. But also, last week she won the stand up challenge for her tribe, or she was the representative of her tribe, and she put yeah, in 110%. Won. And she won. She won. She, yeah, she won for that tribe. Yeah. So, so yeah, like the show was a thousand times better because she was in it. And with that, Dakota, please, your final words. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> Got a few. Uh, but I'm gonna say nice ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has been a really awesome learning opportunity. Uh, each week to like bring uh, like new challenges and to see like what I'm able to, to do and, and showcase. Um, thank you everyone except Nick for being here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you to all of my uh, former colleagues when we were on Team Red pre previous to this. Uh, and I wish you guys all the best of luck except for Nick. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, Trevor and Cody for doing video photography, and I think I got everyone. Uh, 